Good morning. This is Kathleen Clow with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Friday, September 6, 2024. The fire potential impacts for the next few days continue to include isolated dry and wet storms for the Sierra front today, with the rest of the Great Basin experiencing warmer and drier weather. Additionally, northwestern Nevada and western Idaho will continue to experience dense smoke. The smoke risk will continue into Saturday and spread across most of central Idaho. On Saturday, the risk for isolated dry and wet storms moves east across most of Nevada, with a few areas of potential over the Arizona Strip and southwestern Idaho. Additionally, there is a risk of strong winds across the Sierra Front Saturday following Friday's wet and dry thunderstorms. That risk of strong winds carries over into Sunday and expands beyond the Sierra Front across central Nevada up to the border of Idaho and Utah. On Sunday, Idaho will see a large potential for dry storms as that system moves further east and north with a chance of mixed wet and dry storms across eastern Nevada and western central Utah. Over the past 24 hours, we've seen no precipitation or lightning due to that high-pressure system over the basin, so no concerns there. For fire activity, the Great Basin had 11 new starts for a total of 94.7 acres, with a large fire growth of 5,661 acres. Looking at the past seven days of precipitation, we can see the rain from last weekend's system, but overall accumulation was low like we've been talking about, with most areas seeing a tenth of an inch or less. Looking at the past 14 days, you can see we are way below normal on precipitation and very dry across most of the Great Basin, especially in central Idaho where we have our large established fires, as well as all the new starts from last week's lightning. Looking at our ERC point map, you can see very high ERC values, anywhere from 90 to 97 percent across the Sierra Front where we expect lightning today, followed by high winds tomorrow and Sunday. Overall, for most of the Great Basin, ERCs are back on the rise as expected following these warm and dry conditions. Looking a little further into those ERC values across the Sierra Front where we expect lightning, followed by high winds, you can see ERC values for northern and southern Sierra Front are above normal and predicted to remain above normal for the next seven days. Circling back to that smoke risk we talked about on our three-day impact map, you can see our smoke for this morning on the left with the greatest impact seen over the central Idaho mountains. This smoke will remain in place through tomorrow afternoon and expand south over central Idaho. Western Nevada will also see heavier smoke tomorrow afternoon from those fires burning in Central California. So overall, pretty smoky today and tomorrow. For today, you can see that drier air mass over most of the Great Basin, bringing higher temperatures, low relative humidity, and light winds for most of the day today. Uh, that black area over western Nevada with that small pocket of precipitation is our dry wet storm risk for today, which you can see marked in the map on the right with a high risk trigger for lightning. Minimum relative humidities remain in the single digits and teens for most of the Great Basin today with higher values of up to 30% for northeastern Utah. As far as winds across the Great Basin today, they should be mostly light and variable with some higher winds seen in western Nevada across the Sierra Front from isolated storm outflows. Most of the Great Basin remains hot and dry today with highs in the upper 80s and low 90s. On the right hand side, you can see that potential for some mixed dry and wet isolated thunderstorms over western Nevada along the Sierra Front. On Saturday, that storm risk moves east and extends across eastern Nevada, southwestern Idaho, and the Arizona Strip. Most of western Nevada will experience strong winds on Saturday as well, which is something to watch out for since it's following that lightning potential from today. And then you can see the high-risk uh, lightning triggers on the map associated with those storms extending east across Nevada. Relative humidities recover a bit on Saturday from the single digits in Nevada to now the low to high teens for most of the Great Basin after those isolated storms. Um, on the right, you can see that high wind risk across western Nevada, as well as outflows from thunderstorms across most of Nevada and potentially into southwestern Idaho and northwestern Utah. High temperatures remain in the 90s for most of the Great Basin Saturday with a high of 94 in the central Idaho mountains where we have a lot of our established fires. On the right, you can see the chance for isolated dry and wet storms across central Nevada marked in those kind of gray areas. On Sunday, that wet and dry storm risk continues to move northeast across northeastern Nevada, western and southern Idaho, and a small portion of central Utah, which you can see marked as high risk on the fire potential map on the right for lightning. On Sunday, relative humidity stay in the teens for most of the Great Basin with some higher values across central and eastern Idaho and western Wyoming. Again, we can see that high wind risk across the Sierra Front as well as storm outflows across most of Utah and some eastern parts of Idaho. 
Temperatures remain in the high 80s to low 90s on Sunday, and you can again see that potential for isolated storms across the Great Basin, specifically in the central Idaho mountains and eastern Nevada, southwestern Utah. Not much precipitation over the next few days from those isolated storms, with some areas receiving at most a tenth to quarter an inch of rain, so not a huge precipitation impact with this, um, but more to come next week, which we'll talk about. On Monday, isolated storm risk remains for parts of Utah as a low-pressure system begins making its way into the area. Additionally, we have issued another risk for wind across the Sierra front. And then on Tuesday, that low-pressure system continues to move south into the Great Basin, bringing cooler temperatures as well as that continued wind risk for the Sierra front, which is extended into eastern Nevada and central western Utah. On Wednesday, that low-pressure system continues to move into the Great Basin, bringing moisture, cooler temperatures, and high winds. You can see on the impact map, we've issued a wind risk for the Sierra Front, southeastern Nevada, and western Utah on Wednesday. By Thursday, that low-pressure system becomes centered over southwestern Idaho, bringing moisture, cooler temperatures, and higher winds to the Great Basin. And due to the precipitation potential, we've got no risk triggers for Thursday. For our seven-day precip, we can see the areas we talked about with a three-day across Nevada, but additionally, we see higher amounts of moisture that will come from the low-pressure system, which will be over the Great Basin Tuesday through Thursday, bringing anywhere from a quarter inch to inch of rain across most of Idaho. So there should be some good wetting rain, hopefully, for us uh, next week. For our 8- to 14-day temperature outlook, we will be above average for all of the Great Basin yet again. The precipitation outlook has precip approaching near normal to above normal precipitation for most of Nevada, Idaho, and Wyoming um, because of that low pressure system, but still below normal for most of Utah. That concludes today's fire potential briefing. Please check back tomorrow for the latest updates.